We got Lux Tattoo, man. Lucky, thanks for coming through, man. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. How's everything been with you, man? Oh, uh, been great, man. It's been great and busy. Busy yeah. tattooing, huh? Busy tattooing, being a father, um, doing little, you know, little films here and there, little background, you know, little music videos. Just busy, man, hustling. Right. You grew up what I call MacArthur Park area. Yeah, we call it the Rampart area. The Rampart yeah, area. I, I grew up in uh, Los Angeles, uh, Rampart area, west side of downtown, um, you know, Sunset, Silver Lake, all that area. Right. Yeah. And, and back then it was kind of wild, huh? Yeah. I heard even, even before then it was wild. The right. real wild, wild west. <laughs> right. And, you know, you, you mentioned that you, you know, you were out there doing your thing, man, and you catch a case that puts you in prison for, for eight years, right? Yeah. Yeah, I got uh, arrested for um, uh, for a robbery, you know, armed robbery, and um, they sentenced me for like nine years, eighty five percent. So wow. I did eight years out of it. Did they stack on a gang enhancement on that or no? Um, no, they were trying to. So I just took the deal when my lawyer, you know, told me I hey, just take this deal before they start getting you, you know, with more stuff. Right. Yeah. And you were how old? Nineteen, eighteen years. Oh, old? like eighteen, almost nineteen. Wow. Yeah. So. It was young. <laughs> young. Young buck. And you were in prime time, that, that, that 18 to 25, 18 to 27. Yeah, is... I got out uh, around 20, 27 years old. Like, already going to be turned, like, a couple months away, turning 28. Yeah. Right. That's a long time. Where, where'd they shoot you first? To, to county? Uh, uh, like, yeah, you know, like, everybody. Uh, well, I got arrested in, um, on Temple, on Temple Street in Rosemont, um, where my old uh, elementary, but... Um, yeah, I went to LA County Jail first, fought the case, and then ended up uh, shipping to um, Lancaster reception with my first one. Wow. Yeah. So you just took the plea. You didn't have any action on it. You were kind of caught. Yeah, well, they gave me a couple of deals, but they're all bad. They're all like high numbers. So I waited for a certain deal, and which was a nine years. Couldn't get it dropped down. So just took it like you know, whatever, you know. Took it on the chin, huh? So yeah. So you, you were shot up to Lancaster reception, and then you went over to Santanella. Is that? Yeah, after the reception, yeah, I went to Setanella, the the three yard, three yard. I was a couple of points uh, away from the four yard, you know, but um, so they still shot me to the three yard. But it, it, three yard is cell living. It's still cell living, yeah, cell living. Strict politics. Uh, so yeah, cell living, fucking, yeah, well, pro, yeah, the program. You know how the program is, the right. three yard. Right now, y you mentioned that. You grew as a man in prison. Some people are knuckleheads and politic, but you, you used your time to focus on artwork, working out. Yeah. Well, on, honestly, I mean, you know, me, um, you know, I'm a Southerner, homie, you know, but, um, you know, I followed through the program, you know, work, you know, the rules, you know, go by the rules. But um, just doing time, man, I just started learning, seeing how people conduct themselves, you good, bads. And I just got really laced up by good older men, homies, and guided me the right way. And I just started following through with that. You know, I'll just focus on working out, get my mind, my body right, you know, eat healthy, um, you know, learn, listen, talk, you know, like ask questions, certain questions, you know, just be a bit uh, observe really good. You know, that's what you got to do, really observe, you know. So you were mentored by an OG and a lot of OGs, a lot of. Yeah. A lot of OGs, um, man. I met a lot of OGs, and they liked me because I was always a clown. I was like their little, their little little uh, brother, you know. Like they, they got they got to teach, and and you know I'll joke around, make the time fly. But when it comes to real talk, they'll like lace me up really good, oh, like that's really cute. really good. Where it's like, damn, why is this? Why is that? Like, yeah, like yeah, bro. Like so, yeah. you know, I good. Thank God for that. <laughs> You mentioned your folks would occasionally shoot you some paper and put money on your books, but you couldn't really rely on them because they had their own bills to take care of. In the in the beginning, honestly, like you know, I, I got a lot of letters. I'll, I'll be straight; I got a lot of letters from my from my family. You know, a couple of friends. You know, friends that I grew up with. But doing all that time, I learned like man, and you start seeing like everybody slowly like fades away, you know, like the letters stop coming in, the money stops coming in. And, you know, just the, the phone, you want to make a phone call. Now they don't got money on the phone or they're not answering. Maybe they're busy. But once I learned the tattooing in there, like drawing, tattooing, that would be like my bread and butter. You know, if I need some soups, man, I'm going to go ahead and do a little Mickey Mouse card or something. 
you know, to get some soups for me and my celly or just for, or for me, you know. So you you do a lot of beautiful cards. Yeah. What would inmates do with those cards? They'd shoot them to their loved ones, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll do I'll, I'll do anything like uh, cards, like like Christmas cards, any holiday cards. Um, you know, their loved ones. Like you know, they say one of the homies he just picked up on 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 some new pen pal. He's like, hey, my boy, can I can I get a badass carta? And I'll be like, don't trip, fool. Why who's that? Like, oh, some high that man. So I'll hook him up with a badass card. You know, throw some extras on it. Some badass handwriting um you know some chicano word whatever or at whatever they want you know i'll make it make it look good so you started getting a rep as a as a clean artist inside yeah. and how did that migrate into the tattooing oh uh, oh like how i started yeah oh honestly i'll be straight up uh i think i was in i believe uh, oklahoma i was in oklahoma I was in jail out there um so I will do a lot of draw, drawings, a lot of cards. I'll even be in the day room drawing, um, selling cards, whatever. And one of my, one of the boys from, um, from El Segundo, uh, I forgot his name, but um, he'll tell me like, hey, my boy, like, what's up? You, you get down in this drawing, like, how come you don't like tattoo? And I'm like, damn, I want to, but no, nobody doesn't let me fuck him up. <laughs> and he's all like, for real? Well, fuck me up. But I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, I, like, man, just do a, I have an LA, just fix it up and fill it all in black and I'll show you how to do it. And that's how it started. And from there, like, as I was going, he was telling me, like, hey, dude, you're like catching on pretty quick. Like, what the, like, what the fuck? And next thing you know, just by that one tat, everybody, hey, can you do some letters for me? And it just, it just blew a little by little, just getting more experience, doing letters at first and eventually just blew up with the, with the artwork. Right. Clowns, skulls, you know, other stuff. Hood letters, you know. That's cool, man. Now, in South Side culture, a lot of tattoos have to be spoken for and earned. Was there a protocol if someone wanted something blasted? Did you, did, was there someone you'd have to check in with? Uh, well, I mean, we, we, we had a program. Okay. There's a program in there and... Yeah, I'll follow through with the program. You I know? got you. Yeah. yeah, we don't need to go too deep into yeah. detail. You know, but I ain't gonna lie. I'll be on. I'll be like, uh, I'll be into it because it's artwork, you know. And a lot of uh, Aztec work is really beautiful. And um, yeah, but I'll follow through with the program, whatever, you know. Like, okay, so there, there's there's a you can't just get anything blasted yeah. on you. Yeah. You have to have you have to go through the rules and regs, and that's we yeah. Won't everybody get into has their that. own program, you know. Right. You know how it is. We won't get into that. You mentioned Oklahoma, and I want to clear something up for our out-of-state audience. A lot of, due to a lot of overcrowding in the California correctional system, our inmates are being shipped to Arizona and yeah. Oklahoma. Oklahoma, Arizona, Mississippi. Um, I think those are the only ones for now. Right. But um, that was, a, well, I was there like 2009, 10, and... Yeah, they just all of a sudden like they just will come to your door or call you to see your counselor and they'll just tell you, hey, you're eligible to go out of state. And I used to be like, no, nah, I don't want to go like I want a lawyer, you know, like they'll I will give you a lawyer. But no matter where you're going, you know, and I didn't want to because my first term I do. I'm doing a lot of years like I don't want to even be away like that sucks. That's it. Like, I for sure ain't gonna get nobody. I ain't gonna get no high nothing I'm playing. But yeah, you know, so yeah, just because we're overcrowded in California, they they start shipping a lot. But you're of people. still property of the state of California. You're just yeah. being housed. You're, yeah, you're just it's like a prison yeah. of California. There's no like guys from Oklahoma, Wyoming. Like there's not just us, California. Right now, Oklahoma's a little bit more lax. You could have an Xbox in your cell and yeah, a little dude. bit more privileges. Honestly, right? like I really did, like when I heard about it, I didn't wasn't too like thrilled like i really want to stay in cali you know like i want to be you know more in cali you know um for my family for you know just being in cali prison right so when i got when i better when i got shipped and i heard about it like i'm like for real oh they got better food oh they got xboxes playstation so i was like all right look at the bright side of it you know and um i got shipped in a bus uh, no, no no not a bus in a plane like a con air like pretty much con air, you know. Like they give us they, they cut, yeah, they were shack they had us all shackled up, you know, to our waist, straight con air status. You know, I was kinda nervous, but then I was like, well, okay, something does happen, oh well, you know. 
And um, yeah, they kind of bribed us with a cookie, bad, uh, good sandwiches. But really, like, it wasn't all of that when I first got there. It was like, we're on lockdown. I'm like, what the fuck? I just got here. Like, we're on lockdown already? Like, oh, shit. But, so, they, but at least we got cable and Xbox. So that's cool. So how'd you do your cell time, Lux? Um, cell time and out of state, we did, oh, we did a lot of lockdown. So, you know, um, my cell time will... In the beginning, I'll be honest, like, you know, I was low-key a little stressed out because, man, I'm all away from the family. Everything's changing, you know, like you know it's just a process of being a man you know and yeah i was going i was like i was just you know just like i wouldn't really work out as much watch tv chop it up with my celly but after a while like a couple of years later even in other prisons like i'll just if we're on lockdown i'll wake up early um you know um work out uh draw read a book what was your wake up time my wake up time man towards the end of my time my term i used to wake up dude like Five five thirty. Okay. The only reason why I always wake up early because I want to be ahead of time, ahead of people. Like if I was in a dorm, I wouldn't want to like get ready, wash, like brush my teeth, wash my face, use the restroom when there's too many people around me. Right. So I'll get up early just to be the first one to be ready and just suit and booted and just stay in my bunk while everybody's waking up late, you know. Or in the cell, I'll go early. So wake up early. I mean, so you know, I could just be, you know, ready before my celly, you know. And you were working out a lot. What type of workouts did you go through? Um, do a lot of, I believe it was called like catastatics, like pull-ups, pull-ups, up, uh, pull ups, dips, push-ups. Uh, I'll get the, a bag full of like sand or a water bag, hit the arms real quick. Um, I'll do leg lunges around the whole uh, prison track. And I learned how to do that like from like months and years, you know. I'll do two laps. Uh, I'll run. I'll play basketball. And every every now and then I'll play basketball because I want to always come back in for an unlock so I could like draw, get ready, you know, be the first one to be ready for your child. Can you get into how you built your first tattoo gun inside or is that? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, um, well, what you do, you just get a, get a CD player, right? So um, what I used to do, like when I'll go to any prison or, or low level, high level um, yard, I used to always like wait, I'll chill, I'll scope the scene out, all right, whatever, like nobody knows who I am, I'm from this guy from, you know, whatever. And I'll get a CD player, I'll be like, hey, anybody that sells CD player? Oh, you want a CD player? So you could bump, like, yeah, yeah, so I could bump. And next, you know, I'll just break it, bah! And I'll get two mortars, uh, a Jolly Ranch or a Pancake, and those are your mortars to uh, build a machine. And for the needle, uh, I'll get, um, a uh, guitar string if I know anybody that has a you know a guitar I'll get the string I'll buy it from them or I'll get the springs from the pen I'll take those out and burn them up make them straight you know sharpen them up and what else for baby oil uh, I mean for ink I, I'll get baby oil uh, burn that baby oil and um, all the ash that uh, well I put a, a cardboard box on top of uh, the baby oil being burned and I just scrape out all the all the ash and make the ink out of that. What do you mix that ash with? Like a water? No, just, just water. Yeah. Before, um, uh, somebody taught me how to just throw the ash inside the bottle with the, like an eye drop bottle and throw a rock in there and just shake it up and put a little bit of shampoo, some Suave shampoo. But then I learned that uh, it makes the ink too light. So what I did, I just got a bag, throw all the ash in there and um, just put a little bit of hot pot water and mix it up. And it'll, it'll really come out dark. So what I do is just keep uh, keep it just basic uh, water, hot, hot pot water, uh, throw the ash inside a, ba a bag, like a sandwich bag, and just throw a little bit of water, little by little, just until you start seeing it get all liquidy. And don't put too much water, if, if not, it's going to look all watered down, you know? I actually, uh, this is uh, some of my ink that I burned right here. It looks good, bro. Yeah, it looks really good. Pretty dark. You can still tell the prison, like, like the color than like the real ink, but... It still looks good. It, it still looks starts. really clean, man. And you tattooed that whole arm yourself on you, yeah, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did most how of it myself. How the hell did you do that, Lux? I mean, how did you get the, like, for example, the skull on the back? Yeah. How did you? That one was, was there, but um, I remember I was on a lockdown for like, uh, let me see, like six months. And I was tatting my celly. And one day, like, I tatted him all up, like his chest, his arms, legs. And I just got tired of it. Like, man, I want to get tatted too, man. So what I did, I just said, fuck it, like, let me just tap myself. So I just, I first did the this pattern, then this one, and, you know, just started just going to town. And when I got out of the lockdown, all, all the homies will be like, 
hey, you're, ta- you're Sally tattooed? I'm like, nah, I did it. Like, what the hell? How you do it? I'm like, man, I just play music. My Sally's keeping point for me. And I'm just like, just, you know, just going, just doing it. Going no, you through did it. it great. I mean, all those lines look super clean. Yeah. Walk us through that story. Run us up your arm on that one. You've got Joker oh. on your hand. Yeah. So for me, um, like, try to put a lot of meaning to my tattoos. So this one's more like my, like, gel like you know, what we what i go through joe and you know well i'll just explain it like this one is a i'll explain it like this so right here it says like temple street kills so when i put that i put temple street kills so i'm killing dead time and i'm doing and dead time and on the time i put before nine years before nine o'clock because i did eight years so I, eight years and some change so i put it before nine uh, dead time and then um I put a spider because I, I got caught up trying to make money. And then right here, I put the, the Virgin Mary uh, with with her giving me a machine, a tattoo machine, because I've always been lucky or, you know, a bless, you know, to have a, the tattoo skill, but I didn't know that, you know. And I put my year, 1990. My my brother's name right here, Ethan, because that fool is the only one that always, like, asked for me, you know, cared about me, like, you know, well, everybody cared, but... He always asked for me, like, well, how's my brother? I want to talk to him. And, yeah, man. And then I got this funny one. I put the top ROM right here, that Mago Chan, because we <laughs> eat soups every day. But I put him with the X like he's dead because, you know, we're killing soups every day. We're eating, you know? That's crazy. Yeah, I want to get another one, but the actual one, a smiley one, but I don't think it'll fit no more. But one day. Right. No, that's cool, man. That's a cool story. Yeah, and the Joker, like I said, uh, the Joker's more for, uh, you know, you got to laugh in there. You got to have, uh, uh, like, have a good time in there like don't be stressed out you know it, you know we all get stressed out but oh, the, i'll look at this tattoo and i'll just be like man like just try to find a way to have a sense of humor in there you know yeah I'm, I'm still blown away you did all that work yourself on you i mean that's crazy man yeah. so I, I did i always tattoo myself i tattoo my stomach myself i tattoo my knees uh some of my legs um yeah just, I, I mean I, I love tats and i love art you know do the COs, if they see tattoo gear, you know, ink and the guitar string and all that, do they do they trip or do they kind of turn a head? Um, it, 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 it all depends yeah. on like, you know, who the like the CEO or you know the program. You know, some COs they'll see fools with like fresh face tattoos. Some of them be like, damn, she looks dope. Or some of them could be assholes and be like, oh yeah, we'll write you up thirty days. Right. Like, yeah, but I mean, tattoos like they don't really sweat on that. Yeah, you know? I mean, they got to give you guys some kind of breathing room or some yeah. kind of outlet. When man. I went to, the like, the low-level yards, like, I believe, was it, I think, Jamestown or even the cells, like, um, I, I learned how to tap fast just in case. So my Sally or one of my the boys won't get no half-ass tattoo. So I learned how to be fast on tattooing. That's why, to this day, like, I, I'm pretty quick tattooing. Like, I could do a tattoo pretty quick. But without rushing and messing it up, you know. So you're completely self-taught from prison. Yeah. Well, actually, and I self-taught. I actually met a lot of good guys that were our artists in there. Like I met like some like white boys that you know, like the woodpile, like their artists that they had some badass dope artists with the pepper shading. Like I'll get some notes from them. Uh, I got notes from a lot of like badass like homie artists and um, and even Asians too. Like the others, man, they they get down too. So I'll, I'll get like little game from them. I ask questions, but it's all about, like you said, self-taught. Like just, I gotta just do it so I could get the hang of it. But I always have it in here, like what they taught me. So you get out of prison, bro, and and you know, how was it tough to adjust? You know? Yeah, it was, yeah. man. It really was. Like, yeah. um, man, well, just out of my head right now, what I could think of is uh, work. Cause I had like, uh, like I, I got arrested when I was like, I got in when I was like, man, a kid still like they barely turn it, barely 18, 19, no job skills, none of that. So working and being around people that, you know, never been in prison, they're just work worker, hard workers. It was kind of hard, you know, to adjust like the way you talk, the way, they, you know, some people try to fuck with you too. Some people hate and it was hard for me, man. Like, I you went, said you were doing construction, right? Yeah, I yeah. did. Uh, I did like warehouse work, construction, and you know, even especially and especially me, like I always like have that in my mind. Like I want to make it. Like I'm, I'm not trying to go back. I'm trying to like, like be a man, you know. Like I'm trying. I don't, I don't know shit, you know. I don't know skills at work, you know, construction. So I'll try to learn and 
Sometimes fools would give me a hard time. They wouldn't even teach me. I would just be right there just. Right. That happens, Whatever, bro. you know. That happens. But it was hard because being like in jail, like you don't let people talk to you a certain way. So when people, well, one of the coworkers would talk to me a certain way, man, I used to just start tripping, dude. Like I'll be like, don't talk to me like that, man. And they'll be like, what? Like I'm not going to fight in front of people. So I'll be like, hey, let's go go restroom or I'll meet them outside. And they'll just be like, hey, dude, like. Hey, I'm I'm not disrespecting. It's just that's how I talk, and I'll be like, nah, I don't. I think they, I think they were fucking with me. After, I don't know. Yeah, but, they bark an order at you, yeah. and it just would be in a in a disrespectful manner. Yeah, and I even had one of my bosses too. Will be like, hey, uh, I will be in the forklift, and he'll be like, hey, come here, like get get over here, hurry the fuck up, and I'm, I'll be like, what the fuck? And I agree, I'll get mad, I'll get off the forklift, I'll be like, hey man, hey, like, no disrespect, but don't talk to me like that. And he'll be, he'll be like, what? Like, like he didn't get it. Like, cause he just, he's right. a boss. He just probably talks to everybody like that. But I really went up to my, like, hey man, don't talk to me like that for real. And he was like, oh yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, man. Don't now, nah, come on, his work, man. I don't mean it. And it, and little by little, like I learned, like hey, that's just how it is, you know. Right. But as long as they don't disrespect, me, like hit me or talk shit, like really talk shit. Right. You know? And that's been a common theme from a lot of guys we've interviewed that have that are fresh out or have come out. It's adjusting to. You're coming out of such a high respect environment into a world where people are just kind of dicks and they just talk to each other without any respect. Yeah, they don't got respect, you know, morals or, you know, they don't don't follow. They're on a different program, you know. But I'm glad you adjusted. You lowered the volume a little bit on what you could kind of tolerate, you know, and and that's just part of, of, you know, matriculating. Yeah, I think what helped me was... um, even when I, I believe when I went to like the lower level yards, like I went to fire camp, went to the one yard, two yards. I think that's what helped. I, I mean, a lot of people don't, they talk bad about it. Ah, the lower level, I was in three, four yard. Yeah, that's cool. That was up. But I'm kind of glad I went lower yards because it kind of helped, even especially in fire camp, could kind of help me a little bit. Like what's, what's going to happen in the real world, working, like uh, fire captains, how they talk to you. Like I even tripped on fire captains and they'll be like, hey, bro, like, like, you know, you're tripping, but I let that slide. But I, I'm appreciative for all those that program, you know, because it kind of made me a, a hard worker for when I got out. Right. You know, even though I was still going through, like, people talking to me outside, like, rude, I still work hard, though, and want to learn and, you know. Didn't you people walk, skills, you know what I mean? Yeah, didn't you walk off fire camp, though? Didn't you tell oh, me yeah, that? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they kicked me out of fire camp for... Uh, for being out of bounds, that's what they said. I mean, I was in, I was in the camp uh, grounds, but I don't know what happened. But yeah, I got kicked out for <laughs> being out of out of bounds. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> that's and went went back to the three yard. <laughs> <laughs> so now now that you're out, man, you're you've got a really nice tattoo business rocking, bro. Yeah, yeah, Lux tattoos, yep. Yeah. Lux tattoos, and I think you're you're gonna end up blasting our editor because he's looking for some tattoos. Yeah, man. Let me yeah, let me know. I'll give him my car right after this. Yeah, and you've also been doing a lot of acting. We've seen you in Slim Four Hundreds video. We've yeah. seen you with um, Bozo. Oh yeah, that's my boy. I actually was in prison with him. Yeah, that's my boy right there. Yeah. You were yeah. in a YG video? Uh, yeah, recently uh, this it just came out. Uh, it's called, I believe, I Dance. I Dance. Y- yeah, I came out like a couple, like, couple shots, you know, but I'm in there. I got that on the resume for sure. No, that's that's awesome, man. And, you know, I'm glad to hear prison made you a better person. Sometimes it makes you a bigger knucklehead, but you yeah. used it for the right, right I, I way. Believe, I believe uh, when it comes to, like, doing time, if if you do less time, a young age, like let's say do like a year, two years, maybe three years. It depends on the person, but mostly, majority, you come back a knucklehead. Because I remember when I was, what, 21, 22, like, dude, I was still like thinking like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna go to, I'm going to I'm I'm do this, do that. But then as you start doing more time, a big stretch, you kind of like grow through all those phases, you know? Right. Yeah. And yeah, so... So maybe it was a blessing. You you were yeah. pulled off the streets yeah. in that prime time era. Yeah, honestly, I don't regret it. Like um, yeah. a lot of people probably will. Um, you know, family. You know, they probably look at it like, "Damn, you missed all this time." And it's true because there's even times when I'll hear stories from people like, "Yeah, back in 2000, you know, 12," and I'll be like, "Damn, man, I was, I was in the lockdown. Like, it's just gay. It just sucks." You know, and on that, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah, but. 
I, I'm, a, I'm appreciative, you know, yeah. like it's okay, you know. You know, besides bosses and, and the work environment and just public society, you know, you you still have all the tats. You still are what you are. Yeah. When you bump into, say, a rival, like on the streets, mm -hmm. how, how do you, how have you changed kind of the energy you push off? Like, give me an example of someone's like, hey, you know where you at, homie? Or they hit you yeah. up or something. I haven't got hit up like that. Like, you know where you're at. But um, I had a... Like numerous like situations. Like one time I was in the the alleys, the Cajones in LA, and I seen a rival. You know, a couple like a group, like three people, and I got out the car because I'm I was gonna go buy some sweaters. You know, for for my merchandise, Lux tattoos. I got out the car, and you know they look back. They seen my head tattoo, and I'm already just getting my son. Like I'm not even paying no mind, but I'm still watching. But when we made eye contact. Um, yeah, uh, they looked at me and I just went like that, like, oh, what's up, bro? All right. You know, like like if I was in jail, like, what's on, homie? You know, but they seen I'm with my son. You know, I'm not mad dogging. Like, I think it's just what I put out there. Right. It seems like that's really what it comes down to when you see, yeah, when you have the a, energy you put out there. Energy, you know? right. Yeah, if you want to be tough, mad dogging people, you'll get that treatment. You know, you'll get people tripping on you, you know. Right. And I think for a uh, rival seeing me like tat it all up, going to buy merchandise, but I have my son, they probably, and me being like, hey, what's up? Like, all right. It kind of made them like, oh shit, that's what's up. You know, he's on, he's he's on, on some, a, yeah. some, some man shit, you know? Yeah. Like, and that's what it's about, bro. It's just, it's just moving through society uh, in a good way, a positive way. And you're doing yeah. that right now, man. So hats off yeah. to you, Lux. Yeah, yeah. Even, um, yeah, even with the, with the filming, like, you know, background, music videos, even tattoos, like, I, I see a lot of, like, rivals and previous rivals, and, hey, it's, it's, all, it's all love, you know? It's like, we're just working, having a good time, and that's it, you know? You know, just, just grown man business, you know? So, Lux, you mentioned, you know, when you were down and you were doing tattoos, you would sometimes trade soups or whatever, honey buns. Yeah, yeah. But now that you're out in, in free society, how do you price your tattoos? Is it by the time or is it by the piece? Uh, it's, I do it by the piece. Uh, by the piece. So if I get like a a message from Instagram or a phone call, um, I just let them know um, just how big you want it, the placement, because certain placements is kind of rough, kind of harder, takes time, you know. Uh, and let me see. So the price, the, the placement, uh, the area, the, uh, fuck. I just, I just, it just come up with a number. You man. price it out per, yeah, yeah. You know, it's a case by case pricing, right? Yeah, yeah. And then, do you come to people's homes or do you work out of a studio? Or? Uh, honestly, before I used to do a lot of house calls. I used to, well, I started at tattooing at home, but um, uh, I started doing house calls after that, and then I ended up moving to a shop. You know, I'm a licensed tattoo artist, uh, so I just, I'm majority, I just do it at the shop so I could show a professional setting. You know, I have all my stuff here. But from time to time, I'll do house calls, you know, but I, it comes with a price because I'm going to have to take all my stuff. And oh, it's, it's a pain it's in a, the it's ass. It's a risk, a, a pain in the ass. Right. You know, and what if I forget? I have to drive back and I waste gas, you know, just right. a lot. It's right. a lot of headache, but I mean, I'm still down. I'm down to do it. You get some ridiculous requests for tattoos, but if yeah. someone wanted a tattoo on their forehead and do you have a personal responsibility to say hey bro oh yeah honestly uh like, some people probably might think I, I don't care get the money but if uh, i had a guy before uh wanted to get a face tattoo uh and it was his first ever tattoo instead of like okay this much hey let's do it i talked to him like hey bro are you sure like it's your first face tattoo and you want it in your face and i'm like hey how about you know like you think about it and like, man, 30 minutes later, he, yeah, he still did it. He but wanted. at least I give him the, like, you know, the, you know, the like schooling, like, hey, you sure, bro? Like, you want to just get something right here, like your mom's name or something, you know? But they straight out got a face tat. Right. What's your policy on prison tattoos, tattoos? like oh. out here? Like, if someone wants a prison style tattoo, are you like, hey, bro, with all due respect, I, I just don't feel comfortable doing that? Um, yeah, it just, all the, it just all depends. I mean, but honestly, like there's a lot of like regular, like the regular dudes, like regular Joes, you know, that, um, you know, they're, you know, Hispanic, Mexican, you know, and they want to get Aztec work. And I just could be honest with them. You know, I'm just businessman. Like, all right, I'll do it. 
But, you know, sometimes I give them a little bit of game. Like, hey, man, like, do good, all right? Because, you know. This comes with a certain price. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just, uh, it's just a program, you know? Like, when if you ever go to jail. But, but I don't know, you know? But I just do it just for the R. Right, I'll do it. But if it's, like, too, too strict, yeah, stay away. Yeah. You know? Out here, have you done some, like, trades for tattoos? Like, trades? Uh not with cash, but someone has something of value you want, and you say, mm. "Yeah, I'll take that for this." Or has uh, that come yeah. up? Yeah, well, I can't think of what it was. I forgot, but yeah, uh, but it does. Like, let's say I could do it. Like, if some guy uh, tints windows, I could be like, "Hey, man, uh, how much?" And I'm like, "All right, hey, I'll do this for you. How, how about that?" Okay. Yeah. I mean, I could do it, but I just I can't remember what I did for before, like trade. Right. I don't remember, but yeah, I do it. That's the cool thing about tattooing, yeah. You can barter that for yeah. for that. Now, what about, have you thought of launching merch? Oh, merch? Uh, yeah, I'm already, uh, I started uh, like doing shirts, like Lux Tattoo shirts, uh, just so, you know, like, you know, people could promote my, you know, my, my business. And I got some new sh uh, merch coming through soon. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Come, you'll see it, like, on my Instagram or you know, it'll be out there, but yeah, I got merch. I have stickers I give out, you know, to my clients after they get tatted. Um, I got my business cards, you know, that's, got all that. That's dope, man. Yeah. And I know um, you're, I'm trying to get like a, oh, I got even, um, like a table, uh, cover, you know, when I do like events with well, my business name, good for I'm you, trying man. to get a banner, you know, good for like you, the, you know, the canopy ones. Yeah, yeah man. It's just in the works, but you know, it all good takes time you. and money. Are you going to like low rider shows and, and yeah, concerts? Yeah, I'm doing a um, I'm doing a couple events like tattooing. I got one with a, a Sky Presents. Uh, she has a couple uh, events going on, and I'm gonna be out there tattooing. Um, and just whenever whatever comes up, you know, like a uh, couple couple people that I know, they they they'll tell me they they throw it out there, and I'll I'll take it if it's you know if it's cool or you know just to get out there more. Yeah, get my business out there. We have a, a kind of a wide ranging audience. A lot of our audience is younger dudes too that want to get some game. I, I mean, what's your advice to someone trying to break into that tattoo industry? Is there is there some kind of game you could lace them with? Oh, okay. Um, honestly, I started from the bottom, yeah. like prison, and getting being out in society. Um, man, I kind of went. Through for the bottom and you know moved up the ladder from tattooing at home so the only thing i could tell somebody is if you love art if you really love not just tattooing you want to get money not if you really love art you got to do what it takes to get better like be a, an apprentice at a shop um sometimes it'll go against the grain like whatever you're learning hey low-key tattoo somebody one of your friends like but you really just gotta be hungry and just be on it you know yeah but for sure like professional wise you know, just go be an apprentice at a shop, uh, learn, be there for however the time you have to be, but really learn, you know, it's like schooling. And after that, just go full throttle, you know. Do you have room to apprentice someone right now? Uh, honestly, right now, maybe next year I could probably do that. You know? Okay. But right as for now, like, no, nah, I don't apprentice nobody. Okay. I got people that ask me that want to tattoo, like learn how to tattoo, ask me for advice, and I just tell them, I could tell them advice if I'm feeling the mood, or I just tell them, hey, go to a shop. Right. Go apprentice, you know? Right. And put your and name put in, in some work. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that's what it comes down to. You got you to gotta put in some work, and you yeah. did it from the ground up. Yeah, like for prices, too. Like, I know now, like, you know, we, you know, after time, you know, I, I step up my prices, but it's all because I actually learned this, putting a lot of blood, sweat, and tears for it, you know? Putting that work, you know, them hours in. You know, from messing up tattoos to now doing sharp lines, clean shading, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, man, is California getting more and more expensive to live out here, yeah, man? Yeah, dude, it is. It's gas, I man. mean. And then I tell my clients that, like, or even new uh, clients, uh, people who walk in, I'll let them know, like, hey, um, they'll be like, hey, well, it's, too, it's too expensive, no, for this? I'm like, no, nah, I'm actually hooking you up, but I can't lowball myself even more, you know what I mean? Because, dude... It wouldn't right. be worth it because supplies are expensive. Like you said, gas is expensive. Man. Everything's just getting expensive, man. Even McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, it's 20 bucks a person now yeah. at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, you man. Know? I'm going to go back to them soups now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. How can our audience reach out to you, man? Do you, do yeah. you interact with people? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, I'm in the business, like, and, you know, all that stuff, the filming and tattooing. So I, 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 anybody could reach me. 
uh, under uh, Instagram, uh, Lux Tattoos, L-U-X-X underscore tattoos underscore. Cool. Um, I got TikTok, same name. Uh, yeah, they can reach me if they want any quotes on tattoos or they want to come to the to the shop. Just give me a, a holler and, you know. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, we'll definitely, talk business. <laughs> yeah, let's do it, man, and we'll reach out. Or even advice, you know, anybody you know, anybody that has advice or needs advice uh, from, you know, transforming, you know, transformation yeah. from jail to, you know, the world. Hey, I got advice for people, you know, like, yeah. it's kind of hard, but hey, you just got to just, you know, just be strong, you know. But I, I liked what you said earlier, man. It's about the energy you throw out there. You want to yeah. act tough, you're yeah. going to get response, you know, that yeah Way. and i think that's what gets me through uh through a lot of uh opportunities you know like I, i've been like you said like uh slim 400 music video um Rest like, in there's peace a lot of slim, there's a lot man. of you know the brothers yeah. and I, and that video i was like me like the only like homie you know but i knew how to act like i knew how to conduct myself sure. i know how to clown like you sure. know it's just the energy you give out there you know right you know, you probably weren't allowed to tattoo other races in prison. Nah, I could, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They had their own t tattoo artists. <laughs> they had their own, their own yeah. get down. But it's cool now that you can, you know, work with different cultures, different people. Yeah, and it's, it's pretty dope, you know. And, and, you know, you learn two different, like, different skin types, uh, different, you know, just culture. Like, oh, what does that mean? You know, like, start learning, you know. It's yeah. pretty dope. You yeah. hear stories. Oh, that's dope, man. Lux, thanks so much for coming yeah. through, man. Uh, we appreciate it having you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right.